Hey guys, it's Annie. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I did more of like a mental health Monday life update for you guys. I haven't done one of these in a really long time. I go really deep into the way that I've been feeling lately with my depression and my anxiety and also just like some fun upcoming stuff that I've got going on. But yeah, let's get into it. I already did my foundation and contour because I feel like you guys have seen that like a thousand times. So I'm just gonna hop right into my brows. It's been such a long time since I've actually sat down and caught up with you guys. I actually filmed a Mental Health Monday video probably a few months ago, and then it wound up just getting pushed aside because I had to prioritize other videos. And then once it reaches like a certain amount of time, I feel like it's almost not relevant because it's not what I'm going through at the time anymore. I used to do these all the time if you guys have been following my channel for a while. I used to do them every single Monday. I stopped doing them mainly because I felt like when it was every single week, like I just felt like I was complaining about the same things. So maybe I'll have to keep these like a once a month kind of thing. But I have gotten a ton of messages in the past whenever I do these videos that they help you guys too. And not enough people talk about mental health or really just talk about what's going on in their personal life. Also, if you couldn't tell, I'm not gonna be going over their products that I'm using or anything. I just kinda wanted to talk to you guys. My anxiety has been so bad recently. It's almost like I feel like an inner vibration and it's, I don't even really know how to explain it if you're not somebody who understands the feeling of anxiety. It's so weird because it's different than like I almost always have anxiety. It's just something that I suffer with. But this is like a whole different feeling where I am in such a fight or flight that I feel like I'm just like jumping out of my skin. And I've been trying to figure out like what the correlation is because it does go in and out. Like I'm not always at this level. And I know that a lot of it does surround like going out in public, like when we're going to hang out with people. Like not necessarily just going out if I'm just going out with, with Ruben, but if we're going out with a friend, even if it's a friend that like I've known forever, there's just such, and anxiety around it. I don't really understand. I think it has a lot to do with a feeling of like loss of control in a way. Because when you're hanging out with people, this is gonna sound so crazy, but when you're hanging out with people, there's almost like a certain time frame that's acceptable to be with them. And that feeling, I guess, just makes me feel trapped, which in reality, you can leave at any time, but I think it's just that like society standard. I don't know. I don't know if this is making any sense. I also think it's this anxiety surrounding whether somebody can tell that I'm anxious or not, which I do feel that I hide it pretty well actually, but I do just get anxious on whether someone can tell. Cause I feel like I do catch my like eyes like bugging out of my head and I'm like, oh my God, can they tell? Can they see through me? And I am pretty comfortable just saying when I'm anxious, which that helps a lot. It kind of releases the hold of that feeling, but I feel like it gets old after a while. Like I don't wanna to have to say that every single time I hang out with the same people. But I also was watching a video the other day and it, this is just something that I thought was really interesting. And they were like, really sit down and think about it, whether you actually have anxiety or if you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people. I think it was Mel Robbins who said that. And basically the consensus around it is that usually introverts don't like small talk and that can build anxiety subconsciously because I'm totally fine if, I can just say that I'm anxious and have a deeper conversation with somebody. But a lot of people aren't willing to go there. And I never understood that either. Cause I always want to talk about something deeper, but I guess that's like scary for some people. I don't know. Ruben and I talk about this all the time. And I think that quote is true where they say that people can only go as deep as they've gone with themselves. And maybe a lot of people just don't think that strongly into things. Ruben thinks it's because a lot of people just don't want to feel vulnerable and they don't want to be judged by like a deeper feeling like that, I guess. But my thing is, I don't understand when I'm admitting how I feel about that situation first. I feel like it almost creates like a comfort zone in a way. So that doesn't really make sense to me, but I don't know. Do you guys understand the feeling or is that just a weird thing that I think about? But I don't know, let me know what you guys think. And going back to the surrounding yourself with the wrong people thing, I don't mean that like everyone in my life is the wrong person or anything. Cause I still get that anxious feeling no matter what, but I do wish that we had more open-minded friends. But I guess it also makes you appreciate the people more who can go deep like that. But to shift topics real quick, I am officially getting my nose done. I've talked about this in the past about how I've been wanting one for years. I mean, I've always been really self-conscious of my nose. You can see it from the side. It's very much like a beak nose, which I think is cute on other people, but like I just, there's something about it for me. I just, I can't get past it. Insecurities are just such a weird thing because it's something that reigns true to you, but it's something that other people just don't see as a flaw, I guess. I've watched a ton of like nose job videos and they show their nose and I'm like, this person doesn't even need it. Their nose is like so cute. Like I would die to have that kind of nose, but I am really excited to finally get it done. It's gonna be happening in June. So I have 
have my pre-op appointment in May. So it's like the beginning of May and then the actual surgery beginning of June, which I'm really nervous about just because it's the center of your face, but I've done so much research. I'm going to like the top guy. He's in New York. It's Dr. Kassir, I think is how you pronounce it. He's right in New York, which is only like a little bit over an hour from my house. It's like hour and a half. He's a triple board plastic surgeon and he specializes in a closed rhinoplasty technique. I just want more of a straight nose. So I don't want like a like a cute little button nose or anything. I just, I don't feel like my face will suit a nose like that. I just pretty much just want like the beak look gone. So it's it shouldn't be like a huge difference if you're looking at me from straight on because there really isn't much that I wanna change straight on. It's mainly from the side, but I am gonna have him like debulk the tip of my nose a little bit, like just slightly. Cause I do have like a little bit of a bulbous tip, which isn't a big deal. Like it's not something that bothers me at all. Like if my nose didn't bother me from the side, I wouldn't even bother changing anything from the front, but it's like, ah, might as well if I'm getting it done you know but that's also something that's creating a lot of anxiety in my life because I'm overthinking it it's just like kind of a scary thing because that goes back to my control issues like you don't know the way that it's going to turn out obviously but I mean I've done so much research like I said it's not like I'm going to just anybody I do get a little nervous talking about these things because I feel like it's so easy for people to think that oh she's changed Especially if I wind up going blonde, like I've been thinking about going for years, people are gonna be like, she's gone blonde, she's changed her nose, like she's trying to be a different person, she's trying to be that IG baddie, <laughs> which could not, oh my God, what the hell? <laughs> which could not be further from the truth. I feel like people always like to just like make things up in their mind based on things that they don't even know anything about. Like this is something that I've been wanting to do for years, way before I even started my page. And I might not even get hate for it anyway. I'm just like anticipating that those are things that people are gonna say. When you choose to put yourself out there, you do get some criticism, which is okay. It just sucks that it has to be that way. But let me know if you guys want me to do a full video on that where I can just vlog the entire experience. I think it would also be comforting to kind of have you guys come along the journey with me and I can just pop out the camera whenever I'm feeling anxious and just in case like it's something that you were thinking of getting done. I didn't realize how common nose jobs actually were like going through this process of of actually going through with it. I've realized like how many people like in my family and people that I know who have had nose jobs and it's just like wow like I never knew. So that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable because it does feel like such like a vanity thing. On another topic social media has been kicking my ass lately. I've just been so unmotivated, which maybe you guys probably haven't noticed because even when I'm feeling this way, I still upload content. Like I'm still very consistent, but it just, the feeling of me feeling stuck doesn't go away. And even though I'm growing, it feels like I'm not growing. It's just like, just a constant stream of me lying to myself. But it's just a really hard job to have when you're constantly comparing yourself to others. And it's nearly impossible not to do. And a lot of success when it comes to likes and engagement is completely out of your control. I mean, you're relying on these apps to do their like part of the job. And a lot of them are just hiding your work from your followers and it's just really frustrating. I'm also on a journey to revive my TikTok account. It's really hard to stay motivated when you don't see the engagement coming in, like just to keep the momentum. If you guys don't know, I have 1.4 million over on TikTok and I accumulated that probably, I would say it was 2020 when I really started to grow on there and I grew super quickly because I was posting like three times a day and it was something I was really involved in and excited about. But once they, changed their like their first big algorithm sh shift which I won't talk about this too much I'm not gonna like bore you guys in case this is something that you don't care about and I don't mean it to be like complaining at all but if you are an influencer or you're somebody who's trying to build a brand or something this might be kind of interesting I guess I don't know but once they went through their first big algorithm shift which was in 2020 where views just decreased significantly and I've seen it across the board with so many other content creators that I've been following so it does make me feel better in a way that it's not just me but that was extremely demotivating for me and I kind of gave up over there like I was still posting it was just less consistent and I just wasn't working as hard and you can just see that I wasn't passionate about it the way that I was and then you just fall into this weird rut where you're still posting because you still want to be relatively consistent and still keep up with the page but when your heart's not in it other people can tell that and then your views aren't great and then you just fall into 
into this cycle of like, okay, my page is dead. And it's like, okay, well, it's because you're not putting the effort in the way that you were before. So you almost just need to be extremely real with yourself and take the emotion out of it and really look at your page from a constructive point of view, which is really hard to do because our whole job is very emotion based. It's hard to take that aspect out of it. And when that big shift happened with TikTok, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna put all my energy into Instagram, which I did. And I'm glad that I did because I did grow a lot more on that platform. I mean, wherever you put your focus is where you're gonna grow. And a huge part of this job is adaptability, being able to adapt to any kind of situation. That's literally, I feel like 90% of the job because you do need to be able to make those shifts when necessary. And it all just is like a real like balancing act of creating content on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and Snapchat. It's just a lot, but it can be a lot less stressful when you actually have like a plan of action and are just super organized about it. That way it takes the emotion out of it and you're literally just like, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this, and just fully lay it out so it's easier. But when you're in the wrong headspace, it is really hard to do that because that just goes back to just being really emotionless about it and just doing the moves, you know, just kind of going with the flow. Ugh, my stomach is killing me. And it just reminded me that I forgot to take my lactate, but I made like these like spinach omelets today. I put mozzarella in there and I'm like, oh. I'm lactose intolerant, but I refuse to give up cheese. I just can't do it. And it really sucks because I don't get like, like the like diarrhea aspect when it comes to like ingesting cheese, I get stopped up. So it's like the opposite, but I get really bad stomach pains from it. If you guys know any really good cheese alternatives, let me know because I am trying to minimize it. I just haven't come across like a really good dupe for it. So I've just been choosing pain instead. Oh, I know something else I want to talk to you guys about. So we're going to be going to Disney in, what is it? March? Yeah, I think it's end of March. Or is it end of April? What is it? End of April. So we're going with my side of the family and we're gonna be gone for, I think it's like five days or something like that. But it's really exciting. I haven't been to Disney in so long. The last time that we were in the Orlando area, we went to Universal, which I could definitely do that again. I really loved all of the Harry Potter portions of it. I just craved that butter beer. We didn't wind up having the alcohol version. If you guys have had that, let me know if it's good. I mean, I guess I could just make it at home. They have some recipes, but I think the lines for the alcoholic ones were just crazy. So we didn't even bother doing it. Also, let me know what restaurants in Disney you guys recommend. We really wanna do Sanat. Nah, I think is how you say it. Let me know if you guys have tried it and if you like it there. We also really want to do Ohana. But I've been watching, um, I think it's called Disney Food Blog. We've been watching it religiously for like a couple months now just to get excited and to learn like all of like the like little hacks and like what's worth it and what's not worth it. They literally have everything mapped out. So if you're going to Disney soon and you don't know about that channel, it's definitely worth it. And I think they have a new video every single day. It's crazy. But they just talk about Disney World, not Disneyland. So if you're going to the California one, they do post some videos on that, but it's mainly the Florida location. This is my finished makeup look. Let me know what you guys think of every single topic that I talked to you guys about today. I know it's kind of sporadic. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so I don't know, I felt like I was all over the place, but I'm glad that I got to catch up with you guys. Every single time before these videos, I always question filming them because I'm. it's normally like a low energy for me when I just want to talk to you guys about real stuff, but I do always feel so much better after getting it out because I don't really like talk to that many people on a daily basis. So you guys are really my best friends, but let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Like I said, I haven't filmed one of these in a long time. Maybe I will go to like once a month if you want to see them, but I love you guys and thank you for being here. Whew. I don't know why that ended like so sad. I feel like we were on a good note. Weren't we just talking about Disney? Now I'm like, ugh, I'm all low energy again. Anyway, bye guys.